Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, I want to say welcome. For this tutorial, we're going to look at data cleansing or data manipulation in Python for data analysis or data analytics. My previous video, data analysis introduction, we worked with data frames and series. However, we created the data ourselves. But for this tutorial, we're going to get a data set instead of creating our own data set. So you would need a data set or a CSV file. My favorite website to get a CSV file from is Kaggle. For this tutorial, we're going to use a sales data set. You search for sales underscore data. Scroll down a bit. We will find this data set from Kumar and download the data set. For this tutorial, we're going to use Anaconda. You're going to launch Jupyter Notebook. And once Jupyter Notebook is open, you will go to your directory where you're going to write your program. So inside of my documents folder, I have a folder called Jupyter Projects. That's where I'm going to save all of my projects working with Jupyter Notebook. I'll go inside of my Jupyter Projects folder and I would create a new folder. I'm going to call this folder Python data cleaning. I'm going to get the file that I recently downloaded from Kaggle and I'm going to take this file and I'm going to dump it in the newly created folder. You have to put that file in the same directory as your project. If you do not put it in the same folder or the same directory where you are creating your project or where you launch your project in Jupyter Notebook, you will get an error. So just remember that you have to put that file in the same folder. And once I go back to Jupyter Notebook, it will automatically render to show my newly created folder, Python data cleaning. So I'm going to click out and now you see the folder is there. When I click on the folder, my sales data sample file is inside of that folder. And inside of that folder, that's where we're going to do our project. So you want to go over to the new tab and click on Python 3. The first thing you want to do is import all of the files that you need for this project. So I'm going to import pandas as pd. I'm also going to import numpy as np. Run the application and make sure that everything is okay. Then when we import the file, you want to create or you want to have a variable that will hold the information from the CSV file. So I'm going to create a variable called df. On the other side of the assignment operator, I'm going to use the pandas alias pd to gain access to a function in pandas called read underscore CSV. I'm going to say PD and I'm going to use the dot operator to access the read underscore CSV function inside of pandas. So inside of the read underscore CSV parameter, we're going to include the name of the CSV file. So the name of the CSV file, if we go back to the documents, the name of the file is called sales underscore data underscore sample dot CSV. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to include sales underscore data underscore sample dot CSV. When I run this program, we're going to get an error. If we scroll down, you would see exactly what the error is about. So it says UTF-8. If you get that type of error when you're working with CSV files, what you want to do, you want to give the parameter a separator. So we want to say sep equals to and look for the comma in the file. We also want to use encoding equals to and we want Latin dash one. So we only want characters in the alphabet. You can also use UTF-8, but for this tutorial, we're going to use Latin 1. Now we can go back and run the application again, and we got back all of the data inside of the file. If we go back into the directory, let us open up the same file. You can open it with numbers. You can open it with Excel. I'm going to open my file with numbers because numbers is a little bit more clearer than Excel. So if we look at the table, we have order number, quantity ordered, price 
price each, order line number, sales, order date status, and so on. So this is our columns. If we go back, these are the same columns that is in the table. If you want to display only the first five rows inside of the file, we can use df.head and we got back five rows from the table. If you want to display a specific column, you can say df and inside of the brackets, we put our single quotes and you can display any columns inside of the table. So if we go across, we have all of these columns. So let's display country. So we can see df inside of so we can see C O U N T or Y and we're going to run the program again and we got back all of the countries that's inside of the table. If we look at the first column we got back 2822 rows. If you take a look on the right we can see that many of the countries are duplicated. So in order to remove the duplicate value we can say df which is our variable name and you have to specify the column you want to drop the duplicates for. So in our situation, we're going to use the country column and we're going to use the dot operator to access the drop duplicates function. So we're going to say drop underscore duplicates and we're going to run the program again and we got back all of the countries without any duplicates. If you want to display the first five countries, we're going to use the dot head function and we got back the first five countries. If we take a look at the product line, we have motorcycles, we have classic cars, trucks and buses. The best thing to do in a situation like this, you can use the group by to group your products based on the country. So to do that, let's create a new variable, but I'm going to call this variable column. And for the group column variable, we're going to initialize it to df dot group by and instead of the group by parameter, you want to specify which columns you want to group. So we're going to group based on the country. After that, we want the variable group column and we want to say dot first. When we use the dot first function or method, it's going to take the country column and put it in the first column. So let's run the application and we got back the results with the country shows first in our data frame or in our table. You can also group by product line. So we're going to remove country and we're going to put in product line and we're going to run and we got back all of the products group by the specific vehicle. If you want to check if there is NAN values in your table, we can say df dot is NA and we're going to say dot any. And when we run the program, it will tell us if our columns have NAN values. There are some values in address line two in state, postal code, and territory. If we go back to the top, all of these values in address line two, it says NAN. We also have some NAN values for territory. We also have some NAN values for states. The second way you can check for NAN values in your table. You can say DF or the name of your variable and you have to specify the column you want to check for NAND values. So this time let's check for the address line two column. So we're going to say address line two and we're going to use the dot is an A function. We're going to run it and it should come back true for address line two. We can change or put default values in the columns that has missing values. For example, address line two, instead of saying NAN, we can say something like NA or not applicable. We can say a DF and we want address line two. And there is a method called fill NA and the fill NA a would put any values that we specify in the parameter. So we can say fill and a, and instead of leaving the values as NAND, we can say something as NA. Let's print in our address column. We replaced the NAND values with NA. So I'm going to create a block above just so we can see the differences with the changes. And to create a block above, we're going to get out of the block. When this thing turns blue, you're going to press A and that gives us a block above. And what we're going to do, we're going to copy this line 
and we're going to paste it on this line and then we're going to run and it gives us nan now with the second line what we did we replace nan with an a you can replace the address with one two three john street you can hit run and now column has been replaced with whatever values you give it we have a status column in our table so let's print the table again if we scroll over we will find the status column if we look at the status column we have shipped item we have resolved item we have item on hold etc now if you want to count how many products are shipped how many products are resolved or many products are on hold it's simple we can do that using the value counts function inside of pandas so to do that we can use the print function and instead of the parameter we're going to say d which is our variable and we want to specify which column we want to count the value for so in our case we want to count the status column and we're going to use the dot operator and we want to access the value counts function so we're going to say value underscore counts and we're going to hit run and that's going to tell us how many products are shipped how many products are on hold, how many products are resolved and so on. So in our table, we have 2,617 products shipped, 60 products canceled, 47 product resolved, 44 product on hold, 41 is in process and 14 is in dispute. This is one of the most important part of data analytics is creating columns in our data frame. So let's say for every order that comes into Canada or comes into France or comes into the US, they are subjected to a 13% tax. We can create a new column for that table to display the 13% for each country. Let's create a new variable and we're going to call this variable tax added and we're going to initialize our new tax added to our read.csv file. So let's go back up and we're going to copy this line and let's paste it here so now that we have our file added we're going to say tax added equals to and we want to create a new column in our data frame so we will call the newly column we want to create taxes and we're going to initialize the new column taxes to a function in numpy called where so we're going to say mp dot where now remember the mp alias is coming from when we imported the numpy library so we're going to say mp dot where and inside of the where parameter we have to specify which column we want to target so we want to target the country column and to do that we're going to use our variable we just created called tax added so we're going to say tax added and we want to target the country column and we're going to look for the country name usa once you find the country name usa apply a 13 percent tax and if the country is not usa then we're going to put na now let's go ahead and we're going to print the first 20 lines of the table so we're going to say tax added dot head and we want to print the first 20 rows so let's go ahead and run the application and we got back our results so let's scroll all the way to the end of the table and we have our new column taxes if we look at the taxes column we can see that USA have a 13% fee, France, NA, because we specify NA for countries that are not USA. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.